Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. I haven't made one of these in a while, but let's step back from the day-to-day -day and look at a big picture topic. This is going to be talking with near reincarnation in mind, but really I could be talking about any game of like the last five years. So there won't be any uh, game in the uh, title of the video, but let's talk about shutdowns or ends of service for Japanese mobile games. This is an albatross on the neck of every mobile game. But before we start, I wanted to say I'm only reporting here. I'm not giving my own opinion. Uh, some people mistake reporting a thing for supporting a thing, but they are different. Uh, for example, I have said that uh, three ten shots for about 100 USD is the industry standard and will probably never change. And people hear that and think I support that price and call me a shill for the companies. But rather than build up false hope and set up people for disappointment, I report the reality of the matter so we can stop picking fights that we can't win and instead enjoy the games in a pragmatic, realistic way. And sort of tangentially related, I don't want people to believe that by my talking about the realities of game shutdowns that I am spreading rumors. I'm only trying to give an accurate picture of the nature of mobile games and the industry so that we can have realistic expectations. That's why I give percentages for predicting stuff. We do not have inside knowledge of what the developers are thinking and planning, so we can only guess. People say that they are sure the game will reach third or fourth anniversary based on no evidence are the actual rumor mongers. To begin with, let's start with asking what is a Japanese mobile game? It is fundamentally different from a console game in that it is not a physical product. It is closer to an entertainment service, like a Netflix membership or a live music concert. There are advantages and disadvantages to this format. Uh, if it were all bad, I wouldn't play them. <laughs> the good of mobile games is new updates all the time, dynamic gameplay, dynamic community, design skewing towards an older audience, potentially free, potentially years of enjoyment. The bad of mobile games is the gap between paid and free users, potentially expensive, time-consuming, attention-consuming, and the inevitability of shutdown or end of service. And then this video, and then also the next video, part two, uh, will be about that last point. This video I wanted to look at why mobile games shut down. Part two will be more about the how. Because mobile games are services, when the company stops supporting the game, it is gone and no longer accessible. Not maybe, it is definite. There are some long-lived games, uh, Nyanko, Daisenso, Monster Strike, and Puzzles and Dragons are celebrating 10 years of service, which is insane. But I expect them all to shut down someday. And when they are gone, they are gone as we know it. There will be no online or offline playable version unless they make something all new for another platform. The mobile game industry in Japan is hyper competitive and like a half dozen games launch every month and a half dozen games close down every month. And there are entire YouTube channels devoted to covering just the shutdowns. I used to follow them and I learned a lot, but it got depressing after a while. <laughs> Part of it is because great games and characters and worlds are lost to the ether and partly because crappy games launch and shut down after a month or a week or a day and just waste everyone's time. And I think the biggest difference between me and the majority of global players and content creators is that I follow the Japanese mobile game industry, not just the global versions of Japanese mobile games. So I see more of the cutthroat aspect of the industry. I see many, many more failures. For this reason, I'm more pessimistic overall about the life of any and all mobile games. The average mobile game lasts, I want to say, a year. Uh, two years is respectable, three years or more is considered a success. I want to stress that I'm talking about the Japanese market. The great number of crap games that never make it out of Japan brings down the average overall. Alright, but anyway, let's spend the rest of this video talking about why mobile games shut down. Uh, sometimes it's something scandalous, like fake advertising, or it's an unfinished rush job. But I would say less than 5% of releases are those. 
Uh, there was one game based on a property that I liked about robots flying and battling in space, and they show that in the trailers. But on release, in the game, there wasn't actually any space robot battles. It was all just the pilot characters talking to each other on the home ship. That game shut down because the reviews were very bad. Uh, folks were upset that the trailer misled them. Sometimes it's a scheduled shutdown where it is planned. It will go a year and a half or two years or something. That often happens with games that are part of a uh, multimedia push where like maybe the anime is the main thing and then the game is supplementary. This was the case for uh, Kotobuki, which I really enjoyed and now miss. And funnily enough, my favorite character there was a short blonde girl named Fio. <laughs> this was going to be the case for Uma Musume, but the game was such an insane hit that the focus of the property shifted from the anime to the game, and then they announced that they would give up on the planned end date and instead run the game as a long-term project that goes for as long as it is successful. Uh, it also hit its second anniversary with no signs of stopping. Sometimes it is a successful game that has simply run its course and the team moves on to the next thing. Uh, Applebot had a tremendous reputation working on Grimoire A for like six years, but the developer, if not the team itself, got headhunted to do a bigger property near reincarnation. With Grimoire A, they were in the middle of a series of character-specific storylines similar to Recollections of Dusk and Near Reincarnation when it shut down. So yeah, even if there are threads left hanging, games can still shut down regardless. The vast majority of mobile game shutdowns, however, happen because they don't make enough money. Uh, pretty much every game starts in the hole. Development time can be one and a half, two years. Some games have like four year development times. Uh, Genshin Impact was in development for three and a half years. And the average staff during that time is like 100 people. That's a big investment. Furthermore, there is a ton of competition, and there are only so many people in Japan with so much money and so much time. And because these mobile games are so sticky, it's tough to draw folks from another game. Again, when I seem pessimistic about any mobile game I play, it's because I'm pessimistic about every mobile game out there. The odds are against them. And I looked at the history of Square Enix mobile games in particular, released over the last 10 years, and so many of them have shut down. It's like 90% that are gone. Just last year, half a dozen Square Enix mobile games shut down. And then games that feature big properties like Idolmaster or whatever, shut down in a year because the market is that competitive. A big game is no guarantee of success. I've even seen games shut down because the UI is so bad that users can't figure out how to put money in the game in the first place. <laughs> It can be so many things that lead to a game shutdown. Also, not guarantors of success are good graphics, good story, good gameplay, nor good developers. Games need to strike a balance where they make players feel like their investment is going to be worth it. A game can be the most beautiful, engaging, generous experience with the awesomest developers, but if the developers don't give a reason to the players to want to spend, then players won't, and the game will crash and burn. I've seen it again and again. It worried me that the developers of Near Reincarnation didn't put more pressure on users to spend. It worried me that A2 was so strong, she was all you needed like the first nine months of the game. It worried me that they didn't do more non-Near collaborations. Those were just a few of the reasons I was worried Near Reincarnation would not make it to second anniversary. Maybe to global players, Near Reincarnation, making it to second anniversary ain't no thing. But to me and other JP players that know the environment here, it's kind of a miracle. Where we are now with Near Reincarnation, it all feels like bonus time. And like the very strong prospect that we will get a proper resolution to the story is just wonderful. To end, let's think about why are Japanese mobile games set up the way they are and why do they cost what they cost? It's because it's a business model that works on mobile. The pay once, play forever model is not financially feasible on mobile, especially for software regularly updated. Customers on mobile games see two solitary games, for example, and they see one that is $1.99 and the other is free. Guess which one gets the vast majority of downloads? 
And this goes for all types of apps, like weather apps or note-taking apps or whatever. The mobile market and economy overall, not just games, is unique in this way. It quickly became a race to the And it's part of why when Square Enix, for example, releases ports of console games on mobile, like Final Fantasy IV, they make the price high. It's to make up for the lower number of downloads that pay once, play forever games get. But for whatever reason, maybe that would be a good topic for another video, on mobile, people are more willing to spend 100 USD on 310 shots than they are on 999 pay once, play forever games. You might think those prices are silly, but enough people don't that it's financially feasible and has been for a decade. I've seen calls for paid subscription models for the games, and sure, that would be great, but I've been seeing those calls from global players in various games for 10 years now, and it has never stuck in any meaningful way. If you are calling for subscription models now, 10 years in, you're just revealing how naive you are about the industry. Let's learn from history, people. Even originally Western developed games are moving away from subscription models. Uh, Magic the Gathering had a series of games where you paid an upfront fee, and then as they released new content, you paid more fees like DLCs. Then after a year, they dropped support for that game, they released a new version with another upfront fee and more DLC fees, and then they gave up on that model altogether and then went to the Japanese style with Arena. It's survival of the fittest in mobile gaming, and the free-to-play gacha business model is the fittest. And if you want that model to change, either the user base as a whole has to reject it, fat chance, or lawmakers need to regulate it, fat chance. <laughs> People signing petitions on Reddit are not going to change anything major. Okay, so that will cover the uh, why. In the next video, let's talk about the how of how games shut down and what the last few months of service look like typically. And then I'll give some predictions about near reincarnation in particular. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Take care.